Welcome to Wired In. I'm Diana Galata with Hampton City Schools. I'm very pleased today to have a student who is a junior at Kikatan High School, Danielle Kib Kibler. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome. And I did I pronounce your last name right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the reason that we have you on the show today has to do with your attendance at a French Immersion Academy. But before we get into that, I want to um, ask you a little bit about yourself. Did you grow up here in Hampton? And if so, where did you go to school before Kikatan? Well, I have lived in Hampton my entire life. I've never even moved houses, actually. Uh, we live in uh, what used to be my great grandmother's house, mm -hmm. I believe, and so it kind of got passed down to us. Um, I've actually I've attended seven schools in my life, wow. including the one I attended for preschool, and then I went to one for kindergarten. Uh, do you know Bethel Baptist? Yes. On Barfield, I went there, and then uh, I went to Tucker Caps in first and second grade, mm -hmm. and then I went to Mary Peak in third and fourth, okay. and then when Mary Peak got you know disbanded, I suppose you could say, I moved to Spratly for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I loved okay. that school, and then. I went to Hampton in ninth grade, and then I moved to Kikatan in 10th grade. And okay, so you have yes. been to several schools, but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't seem like it's ne negatively impacted you no. at all. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you're at Kikatan now, yes. and you're a junior, a fifth year French student. So tell me, what is your favorite thing about attending Kikatan? Well, my favorite thing is probably a lot of the people from Spratly went to Kikatan. That was one thing I missed when I was at Hampton because I knew almost no one there. Right. And uh, my best friend, uh, Alex Anderson, went to uh, Kikatan and I missed her a lot in ninth grade. And so when I got the, uh, the letter saying that I was accepted out of zone, because that's why I went to Hampton, I'm zoned for there. But um, when I got the letter saying that I was accepted into Kikatan, I said, oh, I'm going to Kikatan, so Good. yeah. Now, wow, five years in French. Why did you decide to take French instead of another language? Well, to be quite honest, I did not like Spanish at all. I got through the you know five or so years taking it as an elective in uh, elementary school, and then I'm like, mm, I don't like this. And so, so you took Spanish in elementary school. Yeah, okay. but I wasn't fond of it. Um, and then in sixth grade, um, I took the uh, exploratory foreign languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, each quarter we did a different language. First quarter we did German, which is why I'm taking German also this year. Uh, then we did Latin and then we did Spanish. And then the last quarter was French. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I love this language. It's so pretty. It's so much better than Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, uh, and I've been taking it ever since. And, I have absolutely adored it. I'm almost fluent now. So, so this past summer, you had the opportunity to uh, attend the French uh, Immersion Academy. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and your experiences with that. I honestly don't even know where to begin. I could talk about <laughs> my experiences there uh, for hours. Um, there were 60 of us, 60 students chosen from all over Virginia. I knew no one there. Um, I, I had to speak in French completely for three weeks. Uh, we actually, they actually had this thing where if we spoke a word in English, we would have to sign a cart. And if we sign the uh, cart, I called it cart because it's cart in French. I'm sorry. That's okay. We had so to sign, sign a, a card. card. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if we signed it, if we had to sign it three times, then, uh, we would get sent home. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's pretty serious. And if, that was for if we said like a word in English accidentally. If we willingly spoke a full sentence in English, we'd be kicked out immediately. So I did not speak any English. Um, but yeah, by the end of the three weeks, I knew everybody's name. I had spoken to everybody at least once. Um, but while we were there, we, uh, we took some classes in French. There was one that was about uh, French America and like the history of like New Orleans and uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one that was just talking about the phonetics in French because there, there are very different sounds within the language. Um, there was 
oh, and we also got to learn a bit of Portuguese. Wow. Okay. Within the French language, I actually learned Portuguese in French. And uh, so now whenever uh, I'm in class, I sometimes almost say something in Portuguese and everybody's like, why are you talking in Portuguese? And I said, because I learned it in French. And so, um, but yeah, I enjoyed uh, all, the, all the teachers there and all, all, the, all the students. Uh, there were also the, uh, the PAs, I think, or no, RAs, RAs, I'm sorry, I learned the word in French and I didn't know the word in English. But yes, it was, it was a really good experience. So in addition to speaking French the entire time, what else did you do? What did a typical day look like? Well, we would wake up at like six, which I was not very happy about, but um, we would get ready. We would go to breakfast where uh, for the meals, there were 12 tables, I think, with five students and one of the teachers or the monitors. And each week you would have a different group in your table, and you would had you would have a different um, a different monitor or teacher there, and so we would just sit around and eat and chat about you know uh, how was the day going to be like and what what did you do yesterday and um, and then after that we would go to our courses and we would have three classes a day. My my three classes the first day were. Um, talking about Francophone countries. We were talking about Switzerland and uh, Morocco and then the Congo. Uh, and then we, I would go to that uh, French America class I was talking about and then I would go to the phonetics class. The second day I had um, like French news, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. The teacher was really nice. Her name was uh, Madame Perry. Um, then after that I would go to poetry and then I would go to my Portuguese class. Um, and then after the courses, we would usually have like an activity, which they called it les activités multi-choix, multi-choice activities, uh, where we could choose like what we wanted to do. I took a swing class one time with, uh, with the RA, Elsie. Um, and then uh, occasionally they would have a sport or like a pleasure activity, which I usually picked swimming because I love to swim. Um, and then uh, we would, we would go to lunch, I think, right after the courses. I think it's been a while, I can't remember. But, um, and then dinner, we would go to dinner after all the activities. And then we would have a, a conversation course with one of the RAs where we would talk about like um, uh, today's issues and stuff like that. We talked about feminism once, we talked about, um, we talked about like kind of self image one time. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about, you know, personal issues and stuff. And then we would, usually, uh, occasionally they would, uh, they would have a surprise, mm -hmm. where usually it was a movie, like a French movie, which was uh, pretty cool. They would put the French subtitles on because it's kind of hard to understand mm -hmm. uh, spoken things sometimes. And then by the time we went to bed, it was like ten o'clock, and so it would just, you know, it would just start over. So, Probably yeah. worn out. Yeah, oh yeah, I, would, I would crashed every night. <laughs> so I'm guessing by the way you've talked about it that you would uh, recommend it to another student? Yes, uh, if, if you can speak the language <laughs> because it's, it, was, it would be very hard to enjoy it if you did not I'm understand sure. the language. Sure. Um, I, have been, I have been able to understand it really well since when I, like, when I first started mm -hmm. for for some people that don't grasp it as well as I do, I think it would be a lot more difficult than it was for me. But if, if, if you had the chance, I would definitely suggest it. Well, it sounds like you're natural with French. Yeah. But what do you want to do when you grow up? Do you want to teach French or something else? I want to do something with French. I know I'm planning on majoring in uh, French and creative writing. Also, I love to write. I've been writing since I was in fourth grade. Um, but yes, I'm planning, I'm planning on maybe doing something for the UN, like as an ambassador or something. I think it would be cool to go to France one day, mm -hmm. but yeah, so. So maybe. creative writing, uh, get published one day? Oh yeah, definitely. Your yes, okay. I, uh, I've been, yeah, like I said, I've been writing since fourth grade and I've been working on uh, this one series that's I'm really proud of. Now are you so. writing in French or in English? 
Maybe both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been working on translating what I've written into French very slowly, but yes. Right. So is there anything else that you'd like to share regarding your experience with the Immersion Academy? I was very nervous the night before because I had never been away from my family for that long. Uh, the longest I'd been away from my family was before was like a week. And so um, I was really nervous the first the, the night before. I didn't want to go at that point because um, earlier in the year when I'd been applying for it, I'd gotten chosen as an alternate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I can go, I cannot go. Right. I wouldn't, it wouldn't matter either way to me. And so I, almost immediately I got called in to say that someone had dropped out and I was going in. And so uh, at that point I'm like, okay, well, I'm nervous, but I really want to, I still want to go. And the night before, I was just really, really nervous, almost thinking, I, I don't want to do this. This is terrifying me. We got to Lexington. I could, I barely remember anything, honestly, what we did there before I went. And then by the end of the academy, I was thinking, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to come, and now I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Even even now, I see, we had so many inside jokes there that make no sense to anybody else. And so in class, I'll just run like Miss uh, Miss Howard will just she'll just put something on the board or just say something that will remind me of something that the sixty of us found humorous, and I'll just burst out laughing in the middle of class, and everybody's like, "What are you doing?" And I'll say it was from the cat. It was from the academy. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you had that experience. It sounds like it changed, it, it changed your life. It did, yes. That's great. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing your experiences with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Wired In. Have a great week.